and welcome to this month's edition of In The Labs with me, Becky. This month I'm going to show you how to create this rather charming wooden bow tie. So I modelled this in a spire and you can see we've got a really nice wavy effect on that bow tie. Um, on the back I've got a clasp, okay, so this basically slots in to your collar so that you can wear it and this will almost certainly make you stand out of a crowd uh, at any special occasion just like this guy. Right then, so we're going to go into the spire, I'm going to show you how to model the bow tie uh, and then we'll create the tool pass to cut that out on the CNC machine. Okay, so in Aspire, we're going to use the open an existing file option. And in the Bowtie project folder, we're going to open the Bowtie.crv3D. Now, VCarve users, you needn't worry, you will also see um, a V3M of the Bowtie within this project folder for you to download and import into your session of VCarve. Okay, so we're going to open the Bowtie file using the open option there. So here we can see that we are currently on the bitmap layer. So what I did to start with was I drew up a sketch uh, of a bow tie just to get a rough shape that I kind of wanted to follow. Um, and then I scanned that and I imported it into the software using this option here. Okay, so that's there in my background. And then what I can do is I can use that to basically create vectors, draw over it, trace it to get the correct shapes. Now, I've already pre-drawn some of those vectors. If we go to our layers bar at the top here, you can see I have a layer here called Bowtie Shape. If I switch that on, you can see I have a vector here and a vector here. So this vector here represents the top right-hand side of my bow tie. And this vector here represents the top part of the knot for the bow tie. And I'm going to use these vectors and we're going to look at mirroring them to get the uh, bottom vectors. Okay, So I'm always thinking about how to make my life easier when I'm creating um, models in the software by limiting the amount of vectors that I need to draw up. Or I could look at making use of the uh, mirror tools to help me create the further vectors that I need. Now in this case I'm going to use the two rail sweep modeling function which we'll look at shortly. Uh, to create uh, the actual bow tie model itself and this requires me to have two rails and a cross section. So my layers bar here I also have a layer here called cross sections. I've got two vectors there and we'll look at those shortly to actually create the two rail sweep. Now as the name suggests two rails um, I need two rails to create a shape which I'll then sweep a cross section between. Now here what I need to do is I need to create uh, another vector that represents the bottom side of my bow tie uh, and so to do that I'm going to take that vector I'm going to come over to the mirror tools and say flip about job center create a mirrored copy and we're going to flip that vertically. Okay, so you can see it's created that one there based on the options we used in this form. I'm also going to take this top of the knot here and do exactly the same. So flip about job center, create a mirrored copy, flip vertical, close out, and there I now have the two rails that I need to model my part. Okay then, so let's go into the layers tab here. We're just going to switch off the bitmap layer. I don't need that on for now. And to add in a new layer, we're going to call this one components. Uh, and the reason that I've created a new layer for the components is just to keep my file organized. I'm just going to move that to the top of the list so that any components that I create on this layer won't be uh, won't obscure any of the vectors that I've got in my job. Okay, so I'll make that the active layer. You can see it is because it's bold. Uh, and then what we can do is we can go over to the modeling tab. Now I'm going to tile my windows horizontally so I can see both the 2D and the 3D view. So we're going to look at using the two rail sweep to create um, the sections of our bow tie. Okay, so we're going for the 
actual right hand side of the bow tie we're going to use these two vectors as our rails and then for the centre of the bow tie we're going to use these two vectors for our rails. Now all we need now are the cross sections that we're going to sweep between the two rails. If we go to the layers tab here I'm just going to switch on the cross sections layer. You can see I have a vector here and if I just zoom out using the scroller of my mouse I have a vector here. And so now we have all the vectors in place that we need for our two rail sweep. So just going over to our component tree, I'm just going to rename level 1 and we're just going to call this one bow tie, like so. Uh, now we're pretty much ready to create our first component. So we're going to start by looking at the right hand side of the bow tie. Where we're going to use this vector rail here along with this vector rail here. So shift to select both of them over into the model and tools and we're going to use the two rail sweep option. We have our two rails selected so I can say use selection and that will transform those vectors into drive rails. Start points for both of these rails are on the right hand side traveling inwards. So all I need to do now is apply a cross section. So we're going to look at using this cross section here. So this shape will be swept between these two rails starting at this point here traveling all the way across to the end point. Here I have further options in the form to control the shape of um, the part that we're making. So here I'm going to use the option to scale cross sections with the width. So that will basically scale uh, the cross section in proportion to the width um, between the two rails. And then we could give this a name. So we're just going to call this one right side bow and then simply press apply and we can see the shape that it's created. Okay, so it's a pretty good nice wavy shape there and we can see um, if we take a look at our cross section that is what is being swept through our two rails to create that shape. Okay, so if we just go into the 2D view and use that option to zoom to fit, um, I'm happy with the component we've got there, so now I'm going to use this option here to start a new component. So here I'm going to take this vector here, shift and select this vector here, say use selection, and to take that rounded cross section which we're going to sweep between those two rails, so we'll select that one also. This time I'm going to set the combine mode of our component that we're going to create to merge so that it blends in with the right hand side of our bow. We're just going to call this one the knot and then we'll simply go ahead and press apply like so. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then we can close out. So we almost um, have our finished bow tie. All I need to do now is create the left hand side. Now I don't need to draw any new vectors and create more two rail sweeps. All I can do is simply take that right side bow tie and look at using the mirror tools where we're going to mirror over to the left hand side uh, to create the left hand side. So with that selected, to begin with I'm just going to right click, set the combine mode of this component to merge so it blends in with um, any other components we've got in our job and then with that selected we're going to mirror that over, flip about job center, create a mirrored copy, this time we're going to flip that horizontally and that will send that over to the left hand side where we've got a new copy. Okay, so if we just maximize the 3D view, we can take a look at how our bow is looking. So it's fairly uh, flat at the moment, so I want to look at adding in more height to um, our model. So to do that, to begin with, I'm going to select the knot. I'm just going to go into the component properties. So here I'm displayed the shape height. So you can see it's a very shallow 0.148. So here I'm just going to add in a base height. So I'm just going to apply vertical height underneath um, the actual current shape. So we're just going to put in 0.1 in there just to raise that up a little bit. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now I'm going to move on to the 
bows. Okay, so the bow, you can see we've got a height of 0.1426, uh, which I'm just going to round that up to 0.2 just to give that a little bit more shape. Press space to apply that change. And I'm also going to look at adding in a base height as well. So we're going to go with a very small base height here, 0 0.05 in there, space to enter that in. We can see that that um, has been changed. Okay, so as I've changed the left, I also need to change the right to match. So I'll make that 0.2 with a base height of 0 0.05 in there, and then enter to apply those changes. And you can see we've now added in um, height to all of the components there. Uh, and this will just make our model more sturdy for when we actually come to uh, machine the part. Now there's one other thing that I'd like to do to really finish off this model and that's look at applying an angled edge uh, to the overall composite model. Uh, and this is really just a personal preference. I'm not too keen on the um, vertical walls that we've got here so I'm just going to make them a little bit more subtle by applying a draft. Uh, so to do that I'm going to insert a new level. I'm going to rename this level and we're just going to call this one draft model and I'm going to set the combine mode of this level to merge. Okay, so we're going to use this tool here. This is going to basically create um, an angled edge around uh, the composite model here. So we're going to go in there and here we can specify the angle, you can use the slider or you could just type in a precise value. Okay, now I want to apply a 25 degree angle um, across the edge of the model. So I'm just going to go ahead and press apply with that set to 25. And so there we can see we've got a nice uh, angled edge. I really like the look of what we've got there. So we can close out and we can just switch off the bow tie level here because what happens when we use the add draft option, it will create a brand new model that has the draft um, as a part of it. Right then, so that's pretty much uh, the model in stage. Fairly quick, fairly easy. So now let's go and have a look at the toolpath. Before we do that, we're just going to tile our windows horizontally. And what I'd like to do is take um, our model that we've got here, and I'd like to use this option here to create a vector boundary around our components, which we can then use this vector to apply a profile pass to actually cut our model out of our material. Right, and so that's everything ready. So what we can do is we can switch over to the toolpaths tab uh, to take a look at those toolpaths. So let's go into the material setup option. So material thickness I'm working with, I've measured my uh, material and it's come up as 0.41. XY I'm setting in the lower left hand corner. Z0 is from the material surface. And we're going to look at the model position in the material. Okay, So where it currently is at the moment, um, I'm really happy with. We've got a little bit of a gap below, 0.025. Uh, and then we've got uh, waste material above, which we'll just uh, cut away. And I want to check over my rapid Z gaps, home start position, ensuring they're all safe and appropriate for my setup. I could go ahead and press OK. So the first toolpath we're going to create is a 3D roughing toolpath to hog away uh, the majority of the material using a larger tool. So we're going to go into the 3D roughing toolpath. So here I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to use the model boundary uh, to define my uh, machining area. And to have a boundary offset of an eighth of an inch, so that means that the tool's just going to roll past the edge of the model by this amount, and that will ensure that it'll get uh, past the edges of the model itself. Uh, machining allowance, we're going to go with 0 0.02 in there, and we're going to do that in a Z level roughing strategy. Give that a name, we'll just call that 3D roughing. Go ahead, press calculate. The software is going to take a moment to calculate that for us, and we could go ahead and preview that, and that's what we'll see on our CNC machine when we come to actually run this toolpath. 
Right then, so that's pretty good. So let's just close out. And now we're going to look at applying a 3D finish toolpath. So this is where we go in with a, a finer, smaller tool uh, to get in at all of the detail. So I'm going to use the select option to choose the tool. Now the tool I'd like to use is a 16th inch ball nose. Okay, so it's this tool here. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And again, we're going to use the model boundary in this case. I'm going to apply a small offset of 0.1. I'm going to do that in a raster strategy. I'm going to set the raster angle to be zero degrees. And then we could simply give that a name, 3D finish, press calculate. It's going to take a moment to just um, configure that toolpath and then it will provide us with um, a preview that we can view uh, to see how our part would look if we was to cut that out on our CNC. So here is my toolpath preview and then if we go ahead and preview that we can get an accurate simulation uh, in 3D of what it would look like. Perfect, okay, so that's looking pretty good. The size of the tool there gets in at the detail, so I'm content with that. Uh, final toolpath we need to create is something that will cut um, our bow tie out of our block of material. So here I'm going to take the vector boundary that we created from our composite model, and we're going to look at applying a profile toolpath. So here I need to specify my start depth, so that's at zero. Cut depth, we're cutting it all the way through. So I'm going to put in Z equals, and that will enter in the value there based on what I've set it up in my job. Um, and then we're going to specify a tool. So the tool I'd like to use is an eighth inch end mill. Okay, so it's small enough to get, should get in at the detail in the corners of the bow tie. I'm going to go ahead and press a OK there. I'm going to machine on the outside of those vectors. If I wanted to, I could add more details to this tool path. For example, I could add in um, ramp plunge moves. I could add in tabs if I needed to. In this case, I'm going to look at using um, um, double-sided carpet tape as a hold down method so I needn't put any tabs in my toolpath here and then we're just going to give that a name profile press calculate and we could preview that toolpath maximize the 3d view delete the waste material by clicking on that and this is what my finished uh, bow tie should look like when we come to cut that out on our CNC so we can close out there and then all I need to simply do is save out those toolpaths to an appropriate post processor and then we could go ahead and run those on the CNC. So let's take a look at the machine inside of things. Okay then, so uh, we're done machining. So here is the finished bow tie. Okay, so uh, very pleased with our finish there. Um, so all I'm gonna do now is just give it a little sand over. I'm just gonna use some fine sandpaper. I don't need to do a lot, it's as pretty uh, perfect as it is. I'm just gonna get rid of uh, some of the little fuzzies uh, in the corners. Once I've done that, we'll then look at um, applying a finish. Uh, to the actual bow. Uh, so we'll get on with that and catch up later. Okay, so I've sanded this. Uh, we've got a real nice smooth finish on there. I'm happy with that. 
Uh, so now we're going to look at finishing this. So um, I've got the material that I used originally to cut the bow out of. Uh, and I tried two different finishes. So one was um, just an interior varnish, and then the other was um, beeswax furniture polish. I'm not too sh sure how well you can actually see this, but the uh, varnish gives it a really kind of glossiness to it. Um, whereas the beeswax, it gives a, a nice shine. It just really brings out the sheen of um, the actual grain. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, so that's just basically a beeswax uh, polish. So this is what it is. This is what it looks like. Okay, and the idea is, is I basically take um, a cloth and I'm just going to apply a little bit like this to the cloth. And I'm simply just going to rub that in. I'm going to rub it in uh, in the direction of the grain. And this is going to give it a real nice uh, sheen to the bow tie. And then we'll leave that for about uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, and then we'll kind of rub into it again, but with a clean cloth. Uh, and then we'll just see the results of that. And then we could look at deciding whether we want to uh, apply anymore so you can see already that it's just giving it a nice uh, sheen it's really bringing out the grain and the contrast of the um, the kind of stripes that we've got there okay so we'll just carry on with that just rubbing in with the grain Okay, so that's that in there. Um, so all we're gonna do now is just basically leave that uh, for 10 minutes uh, and then we'll rub that off. And so we'll come back later when we're ready to do that. Okay, so that's after 10 minutes. Uh, so now I'm just gonna rub this with a dry cloth, like so. Again, go in with the grain. We can see already it's got a real nice sheen on there. I'm not too sure how well uh, you can see that but it's really bringing out uh, the grain pattern. Okay so I'm going to do another rubbing of the beeswax and then we'll rub it off again um, until I'm happy with the finish and the shine I've got I mean at the minute it is really nice I've got a nice sheen there um, so we're gonna go for another one see how that looks Okay, so we've got two lots of beeswax on there. It's giving it a really, really nice sheen. Uh, it looks nice and natural. It's a little bit of a glitter. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to look at um, attaching the clasps. So I've got uh, one of these clasps. Okay, so the idea here is you're gonna attach that to the back and then this part is going to clip in to your collar. Okay, so I just got this uh, from eBay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, gluing this on to the bow tie. So I'm going to use uh, an adhesive along with an activator. Um, and this stuff is really, really strong. So that's going to hold that. Um, so I'm going to go and do that and then we'll take a look at the finished result. Okay, so here is the bow. Here is our clasp glued onto the back there. Okay, so that is firmly in place, uh, ready to work. 
Okay, so that pretty much finishes the build on our finished bow tie. Uh, now, we've seen how quick it was to model in the software, and the tool pass itself were fairly quick to cut as well, so it's a nice, quick, easy project for you. And if you fancy having a go at this for yourself, then simply head over to your VNCO account where you can download the project files from there. And if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then please hit the subscribe button uh, where you can get instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. So thank you for watching and happy making.